Now, I want to be really clear. This is not about making teachers funny. It's about what we can take from stand-up comedy and apply to teaching to make it better for you and for your students. So, there's going to be none of this. <laughs> Hi guys! Today we're going to be talking about the mass of planets. And talking about the mass of planets, your mama so fat! And none of this. One plus one is two. Two. So, consider yourself pre-warned. This advice comes from both perspectives of a teacher new to the profession or returning to the classroom and a stand-up comedian new to the profession or returning to stage. Think of it this way. This is advice for anything that's face to face. Here's my face. I don't like it either. But saying that, maybe, just maybe, during this video, you might laugh, learn. Now, how can I put this? This year has been a little different. How can I say it in a nice way? The year of our Lord, 2020? Yeah. Lord Satan. All hail the Prince of Darkness. He is fuzzy like I did. All I'm trying to say is doing anything face to face right now feels really weird and we're all just trying to get back on the horse, which is tough because I don't have a horse no, no. and you're more than justified to feel like this. <gasps> Advice number one, no plan survives first contact. Teachers, you're fantastic creatures. You plan, prepare, organise, strategise. You've got your learning verbs, seating plans, schemes of work, group profiles, quizzes, assessment objectives, your handouts, your overly animated PowerPoint presentations. You, you are ready. You're good to go. You're 90% caffeine and 10% painkillers. Stand-up comedians, you're fantastic chameleons. You wander around the house like a mad philosopher asking the question, hmm, what's the deal with that? So he crosses the road, but why? Hmm, huh? <laughs> yeah, good one. Hmm. You've got your jokes, your patter, your callbacks, your opener, your closer, your heckle put down as you practice in front of the mirror to no one like an idiot. You're 90% adrenaline and 70% badder maths. You got a tight 10, the timing's down, and your name's been called, and now you're up. And it didn't really work, did it? Congratulations! You failed! Well, that's not quite right. The truth is, you joined a profession in which you fail, learn from it, fail again, fail better, before you ever get good. That's great. As long as you're making forward progress. To get good, you've got to get better and better, little by little, first. There's no shortcuts. It's a type of profession that the only way to learn how to do it is to do it. But here's the good news. Your learning curve is not the same as anyone else. Your learning is not a curve, it's iterative. Each step builds on the next. Your learning curve is not really a curve at all. It's a cycle. It's Kolb's learning cycle. So, in short, it'll be bad, then good, then good, then bad, then bad, then good again. The real trick is to be comfortable with it. 
Advice number two. Change what you do, but develop who you are. Let me ask you a question. Are you done? Are you done learning, growing, developing? Are you finished? If the answer is yes, get on out of here. This is not for you. But if you answered no, then this is for you. Let's face it, life can be long, hard and boring. Just like my little friend here, my dictionary. <laughs> uh, oh, I think my dictionary was just sick. What you do. Now, there's not much in life that you can control, but what you can control is what you do learn and reflect on what you're doing in order to keep getting better. I'm a silly man. Advice number three. Now, this next piece of advice is gonna be way oversimplified. It's gonna be big brushstrokes time. But if you want me to go into more depth in another video, Leave a comment down in the word box. Make sure to use the magic word. Subscribe! This deceptively simple tool is my chair. This deceptively simple tool is your key to better communication. What you do, what they respond to twirling and swirling and whirling. Now you can use it in a big macro way, or you can use it in a highly defined micro way. Big picture, little bitty detail. The trick is to use it reflectively and consistently over time. If you use it reflectively and consistently, you will evolve into your final form. You'll be thick-skinned like a rhino, sharp-eyed like an eagle, and you'll have a water-resistant back. Like a duck. You won't be good-looking like me, but you will be good at your job. So, that's eagle-eyed, rhino-skinned, laminated back which means you'll let all the watery chaos just run off of you. And you'll have the patience like a monk in the middle of a battlefield. Namas today. Um, namas tomorrow. Uh, namas stay. What you don't want to do, but I promise you will want to, is to react to the chaos around you with your own inner chaotic poop-throwing monkey. <laughs> so just remember it's more monk and less monker. Monkey. Advice number four. Who are you? Hey, who are you? Who are you? No, seriously, who are you? God, who am I? Now, here's a tough one. Who are you? No, seriously, I've just got to stare into this camera. I don't know who you are. Please talk to me. Here's something that's just not said enough. If you're teaching, or doing stand-up comedy, you are in the public eye. Your public is right there in front of you and you have to interact with them. It's somewhere between performance to be or not to be. That is the question. It's kind of a rhetorical question. I mean, you are dead and public speaking. 
my fellow humanians here yet. Do not ask what your country can do for you. Instead, ask, where the hell is my accent from? Thank you. What really connects you, you to them is what Tony Allen calls one of my mentors. Attitude. Attitude. You wanna make something of it, kid? Eh? Screw you, ring light. Do you wanna make something of it? Very light text that won't show up in this shot. Sorry, Tony. But what's so similar about teaching in stand-up and separates them from other things is that direct connection with their audience. Without that connection, that interaction, there is no laughter and there is no learning. And what this basically means is your performance is a reaction to the situation you find yourself in. Naturally, whether you're teaching or doing stand-up comedy, your body is in fight or flight mode. What you decide to do with that, that's the key thing. Sorry, Tony, can't see you right now. You're gonna have to be a prop, but I'm gonna say your words. When you put a person in front of a room of people, they are going to perform. When in this situation, bits of their personality are no longer necessary and will be dropped, whereas other parts of their personality will aid the situation. Thanks, Tony. Now think about it this way. How many roles do you play in a day? Your a mother, a brother, a sister, a mister. Maybe you identify in a totally different way. That's cool, that's your business, you do you. You're somebody's friend, you're somebody's enemy, you're somebody's colleague. Do you act the same way in all of these different situations? No. But are you the same person in all these situations? Yes. Well, actually, well, this is not right. Go away, philosophy. You've had your turn in this video. So in short, we all have a natural attitude, but knowing it, where to use it, how to use it, when to use it, and why, that's a different story. If you want to see more about that, leave a comment down in the word box. And, um, you know, what's that word again? Subscribe! So, if you remember nothing else, remember this. The reason I'm talking about stand-up comedy and teaching is this. Stand-up comedy demands a connection between yourself and your audience. Teaching, at its core, has the same demand. The best tool to use to make that connection is yourself. You're a massive tool. And so am I. So I'll see you lovely learners later. But do me a favor, spread this around a bit. People need to know. People need to know. But seriously, really appreciate it if I hit my desk. And I also appreciate it if you give me a like, give me a subscribe, share it about a bit. Share the love. The world right now needs gloves, sweet gloves. Does anyone even own gloves anymore? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, bye.